Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Welcome to another one of the SQL Server Fundamentals videos. Now, the last two videos were on creating databases, creating a database using the Management Studio GUI, and creating database, the preferred method, using T-SQL. This video is going to be talking about database properties, because while we took the defaults in the last two videos, and we did a little manipulation on the files, by and large, we did exactly the what you would get just from any database that you created. Now, there's a database called Model, and it's a system database, and that database is what all the other databases are created from. It's sort of like you copy a database. Not really what happens, but, but you can kind of think of it that way, is the Model database provides this mechanism for creating all the others. But there are a lot of properties in there, and some of them I want to discuss with you now. Others are going to come up over time. We will address them as we get to them. Um, but there's a few I want to get right in front so we have a nice chat about them because they matter in terms of, you know, internationalization and, and you know, language sets and, and data recovery and things like that. Um, very fundamental stuff that we should talk about up front so you guys have some understanding of how and where things happen. Let's go take a look at it. All right, we've got Management Studio open. We're connected to my server. Let's take a look at the properties of a database. We've got the AdventureWorks database right here. And we can click, right-click on it, get a context menu, scroll to the bottom, and select Properties. Now the Properties window will open, and you'll notice there's a number of different properties that we could talk about. The general properties are a description of the um, information about the database, users, space available, size, and you know details about the information. It's all very nice. Then we start to get a breakdown on the stuff that we've used to create this database, the files, the file groups. This is where we're going to focus today, is on a bunch of the options, because there are a whole slew of different options, and we can manipulate these directly through the GUI, or we can use T-SQL. And you'll notice there's a lot of them. They're very thick. Um, you know, we can change things like the recovery model. We can change things like the collation. Um, we've got different kinds of things we can do with the compatibility level. This is a very fundamental thing that we can do. And you'll notice there's different compatibility levels depending on which version of SQL Server that we're talking about. And that's going to change the way SQL Server behaves within that single database. So even though you're on SQL Server 2017, you could change the compatibility level to be for 2008. And then that database will not behave exactly the same as all the other 2017 databases you have on your 2017 instance. You also get into all kinds of automated things such as create um, and shrink statistics. Um, we've got information on cursors. Uh, if we scroll down here, the database scoped configurations and ways you can change the behavior of the database. Now a lot of this is way behind, beyond the fundamentals. We're not going to cover it today. Um, but I just wanted you to know where to go to get the information. Um, you've got the ANSI standard um, connection settings, um, parameterization mechanisms that you can set. All this various stuff are all defined within the database properties. Now you've also got additional advanced functions such as change tracking. You've got permissions on the database itself. There are extended properties that you can have. Um, whether or not you've got mirroring set up, transaction log shipping, and finally, the query store, one of my favorite, favorite functions you control here from the properties or from T-SQL. Now, speaking of which, let's back out for a second and just talk about a couple of properties in some detail. First up, I want to talk about collation. Now, when we talk about collation, we're talking about character sets and the behavior of text within the database. And so when we talk about a simple create command, like we did in the last um, video, and we've got create database, um, give it a database name on primary, give that a location, put the log someplace and set that all up, we can then add the collation. So we can control the collation at the point of database creation. Now, as you already saw, we can also alter our database through the, through the properties window. But by and large, you want to start setting these things up so that you're creating the databases the way they should be created right at the start. Also, you'll notice that the collation command that I've got highlighted is not a separate command. There is this thing called with 
that you'll that we'll see in just a second that affects the way we do stuff. But collate is just saying, hey, set this level, you know, set this type of collation for this database. The next thing I want to talk about is the recovery model. Now, recovery is is an odd thing in databases. We're going to have to spend some time in talking about recovery models when we start talking about database backups and restore. That's going to be a little further down the line. We're going to get a lot more you know, fundamental fundamentals before we get even to backups and, and re restores. But right now, what we're talking about is you know, if we do a simple create database command, you can create the database, and you'll see um, we can run this, and we'll create the database. So there, that database is now created. Um, if we go over here and refresh, you can see it. And so now you've got my simple DB has been created. Now another command that we haven't looked at yet is the alter database command. Now recovery model is something that it's very important to a database because it affects the way log is the logs are, are going to be dealt with, but more importantly, it affects the, your ability to recover data in the event of a failure. But in this case, we've got a really simple database, and we want to set the recovery to simple. So what we can do is, is even after we've created a database, we can just manipulate it directly. And so we're going to say alter database, provide the database name, and then set the recovery model to something that we want, in this case, simple. And it's that easy. Now, I'm going to have to spend a lot of time talking about recovery. We're probably going to have at least one video just on recovery models. So I can't really get into it today. Let's just go with simple idea that there's simple recovery, which means that the logs aren't really affected. You don't need to worry about them too much. And there's full recovery in which you need to ensure that you've got log backups running on your databases. That's the, that's the bare bones, but there's so much more to it. I mentioned earlier about the compatibility level. You can make that same change using the alter database command to change the compatibility level. A lot of the other ones, containment type, some of the other options, can all be modified using the alter database command. Some of these will come up in other videos as we're going through them. I'm not going to detail every single one. Um, I will get a link down below to the alter database command so you can follow that and, and deal with that as as you come upon it. But just understand that, yes, we can pretty much you know, create a database and, and off you go, but there's actually so much more to it and you're probably going to be changing databases over time and that's where the alter database command comes in. Now, if this information is useful, please hit that like, hit that subscribe. I think there's a bell someplace you're supposed to ring, my kids keep saying, whatever. The important thing to remember here is that what I really need out of you guys is to let me know if these fundamentals are helping. The key is there's a lot of properties in a database, a lot of behaviors we can control, very granular control that we can get into. But for the fundamentals, most of it you don't need, but the things that I just covered, we do need. It's very important. Collation matters. Recovery models matter. Um, compatibility levels really, really matter. And so I want to be able to know how to manipulate these things and how to make the adjustments on them over time. There's going to be a lot more coming, so keep an eye. Watch this space. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.